The UK Light Protected Vehicle Program forms a critical component of the broader land mobility program, initiated by the Ministry of Defense to modernize the British Army's fleet amid evolving threats and operational demands. This segment focuses on procuring approximately 2,500 light protected vehicles with a gross vehicle mass of up to 10 tons, designed for roles such as patrol, reconnaissance, and rapid response in contested environments. Key requirements include ballistic and blast protection to Stenag 4569 Level 2 or higher, high mobility across diverse terrains, digital integration for network-centric warfare, and adaptability for various mission modules. Urgency stems from the impending retirement of aging vehicles like the Panther and Vector by 2030. Driven by lessons from recent conflicts in Ukraine and the Middle East, necessitating swift procurement with tenders expected in late 2025 to achieve initial operational capability by 2029. Several manufacturers have positioned their vehicles as potential candidates for the light protected vehicle segment. Leveraging proven designs with enhancements for UK-specific needs like enhanced IED resistance and interoperability with NATO allies. Here are three prominent contenders based on industry demonstrations and program alignment. The JLTV A2 variant stands out as a versatile 4x4 platform already in service with US forces, adapted for export markets. Weighing around 6.4 tons curb and up to 10.2 tons gross, it features a 6.6-liter Duramax diesel engine producing 340 horsepower, enabling speeds of up to 110 km per hour on roads and a range of over 480 km. Protection includes a scalable armor system providing baseline Stenag Level 2 ballistic shielding against 7.62mm rounds and artillery fragments, with add-on kits boosting mine and IED resistance to Level 3A and 3B. Mobility is enhanced by an independent suspension system and central tire inflation for off-road performance, while digital features include embedded diagnostics and compatibility with UK battle management systems. For weapons, the JLTV supports remote weapon stations like the Kongsberg Protector, mounting options for the M2.50 caliber machine gun, M2 47.62mm general purpose machine gun, or anti-tank guided missiles such as the Tau or Javelin, with integration for grenade launchers like the Mark 19. The AM General Humvee Sabre represents an evolved iteration of the iconic high-mobility multi-purpose wheeled vehicle, optimized for light-protected roles with a patented armored cab. Its gross weight ranges from 5 to 7 tons, powered by a 6.5-liter turbocharged diesel engine delivering 205 horsepower, achieving top speeds of 105 km per hour and an operational range of about 400 km. The Sabre incorporates 360-degree kinetic energy protection against small arms fire and shrapnel, with underbody blast deflection equivalent to Stanag Level 1, upgradable via modular armor panels for enhanced IED mitigation. It boasts improved ride quality through reinforced chassis and suspension, plus electrical architecture for sensor integration and unmanned system control. Weapon configurations include turret-mounted systems for the L7A2 GPMG, British variant of FN Mag, .50 caliber Browning, or remote-operated stations compatible with UK ordnance like the Sharpshooter Remote Weapon Stations, allowing for anti-personnel or light anti-armor capabilities with grenade or missile add-ons. The KNDS Dingo 3 is a modern 4x4 or 6x6 armored vehicle designed for dangerous areas. It weighs up to 13.1 tons, with a 218 horsepower Mercedes Benz diesel engine providing 810 Newton meter torque, speeds of 90 to 120 km per hour, and a range over 700 km. It offers strong protection against mines, IEDs, bullets, and artillery at Stenag Level 3 or higher using a V-shaped hull and add-on armor. Built on a reliable Unimog chassis, it has great off-road mobility, high clearance, and compact size for easy movement in cities or countryside. It includes systems for sensors and command links. 
Weapons feature a remote turret for 7.62mm guns like the Rheinmetall MG3, .50 caliber machine guns, grenade launchers, and options for UK anti-tank missiles. The combat provenance of these vehicles provides reassurance of their reliability in real-world scenarios, drawing from global deployments. The Oshkosh JLTV has accumulated significant operational experience since its introduction in 2019, primarily with U.S. Army and Marine Corps units. It has been deployed in support operations in Syria and Iraq, where it demonstrated resilience against roadside bombs and ambushes during convoy protection missions. Its performance in Ukraine aid packages via U.S. transfers further highlights its adaptability in high-intensity conflicts against peer adversaries. The AM General Humvee's Sabre builds on the legacy of the original Humvee, which has seen extensive combat across multiple theaters. The base Humvee platform was pivotal in the Gulf War 1991, where it facilitated rapid advances, though early models highlighted vulnerabilities to IEDs, leading to up-armored variants like the Sabre. Sabre-equipped units have been used in Iraq and Afghanistan by coalition forces, surviving numerous blast events and providing mobile fire support in urban combat. Its recent use in Ukrainian defenses against Russian advances showcases its endurance in prolonged engagements. The KNDS Dingo 3 builds on the Dingo family's proven combat record, with over 1-200 units used in 10 countries. Now in service with the German army since 2025, earlier versions like the Dingo 2 performed well in Afghanistan, surviving IEDs and ambushes during patrols with high crew safety. In Mali, they supported UN operations in tough deserts, handling gunfire and mines. Lately, Dingo models in Ukraine have shown toughness against artillery and drones in intense fighting, emphasizing their protection and movement. The UK Light Protected Vehicle Program represents a pivotal step toward equipping the British Army with resilient, future-proof mobility solutions amid budgetary constraints and geopolitical tensions. Among the potential candidates, each brings a blend of proven protection, versatility and combat-tested performance that could effectively replace outdated fleets. As tenders progress in late 2025, the selection will likely prioritize UK industrial involvement, cost-effectiveness, and rapid deployability to meet the 2030 deadline. Ultimately, this initiative not only enhances soldier safety, but also bolsters the UK's strategic agility in an increasingly volatile world, ensuring readiness for hybrid threats and alliance commitments. <laughs>